All right. Well, my name is Sonia Stringer. I am very pleased to be your MC for this evening's presentation. And over 25 years ago, I was introduced to what I thought was a pretty radical thing at the time, psychedelic assisted therapy. And since that time, have been very involved in that field. I'm a huge advocate of this work. And many of you may have heard of it, I'm sure, by this time. You may not know that this work has been going on for decades in the 50s and 60s. There were actually over 1,000 clinical trials being uh, run at that time using psychedelic-assisted therapy to test for various conditions. And due to some political upheaval <laughs> in the 70s, a lot of that substance and that medicine was rescheduled, unfortunately. But it's been really exciting to see that in the last decade, a lot of this clinical work has been reignited. And you may have heard about some of the work going on by Johns Hopkins, New York University, uh, Berkeley, Stanford, Imperial College of London. Those are just a few of the institutions that are literally pouring millions of dollars into psychedelic assisted therapy work. And in the next five to 10 years, you will no doubt find this uh, in the mainstream of a lot of our healthcare systems. And I was very lucky a couple years ago to be invited to be on the board of the Canadian Psychedelic Association. And through that work, uh, actually I should say, if you're not familiar with the Canadian Psychedelic Association, I really encourage you to find out more about that group. They've been very involved in regulatory reform here in Canada. They've done a lot of work with Health Canada and have worked really closely uh, with Health Canada to help uh, get the laws changed and actually work on a really sound medical model to make sure that people have access to these medicines. And through that work, I was very lucky also to have a chance to meet and liaison with a number of the businesses here in Canada and a number of the clinics, and that's how I was first introduced to Entheotech. And I can tell you from a personal note that having met and worked with a lot of people both in Canada and the States, Entheotech is truly on the cutting edge, and they have a phenomenal team who aren't just providing these cutting edge therapies now in this area, but are really doing some fascinating work and innovating a lot of it as well. So we're really lucky to have them here in Kelowna, and I have no doubt they will become nationally known and probably internationally known in the years to come. So with that, let me quickly introduce our first presenter, Dr. Francois Lowe. He's the co-founder of Entheotech chief medical officer, and he's going to be presenting on psychedelics and their use in chronic pain and mental health, a brand new frontier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia, and thank you so much uh, to the team. It's just wonderful. How wonderful is it to be here in person with uh, colleagues again? We all need that connection. I think it's, it's just great. And hopefully we can sort of grow this movement in Kelowna and further afield. So I'm going to talk about psychedelics and chronic pain and mental health. We're going to be opening up new frontiers. So my background is in, um, so I'm, a, a, my background is in a GP anesthesia. I'm a recovering ER doc. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a pain physician. I'm also an associate clinical professor at, uh, in the UBC Department of Family Practice. And... Um, yeah, I'm also a treating physician and a founding member of the Bill Nellum's Pain and Research Center, which is the biggest, busiest, comprehensive pain clinic in Canada. And we just have a top-notch uh, group of uh, practitioners there as well. So I want to do in the mental health field what we've done for pain, create a multidisciplinary group, a big tent, like at Nellum's. Uh, you know, we've got seven-plus medical specialties. Um, you know, we do pain webinars for free for patients. Uh, we're integrated with this wonderful UBCO psychology team, and you're, the, you're here. Uh, we've got researchers on our team, uh, and we're sort of just well integrated. And I think we need to do the same in the psychedelic field. So Entheotech's vision is to create novel treatments for the uh, reduction of chronic pain, depression, and opioid use. This team's uh, approach is... Uh, built on three pillars, the first being clinics, so we are uh, in, uh, interested in innovation, innovative solutions for chronic pain uh, in conjunction with psychedelic assisted therapies in a clinic setup with close medical monitoring, support, uh, and we're going to be starting with ketamine and then furthermore uh, you know, moving to hopefully psilocybin and MDMA, both are looking very promising. Uh, so we also will be doing interventional pain treatments, uh, you know, as, as an adjunct. And uh, we also want to really focus on research. 
because research is going to change the world here. So we are launching uh, two clinical trials, hopefully in the near future, to study the efficacy of macrodose and later ma microdose therapies. Um, we also are looking at a biometric study for our ketamine patients uh, to you know, investigate the benefits of ketamine-assisted therapy, or KAT. And uh, we really hope that this is going to help build the body of evidence so that we can positively affect the regulatory change in Canada. And thirdly, we're going to, we are developing natural formulas. Uh, we're doing research and development of macrodose and microdose natural product formulations. And uh, we have an exclusive genetic library of more than 200 um, mushroom strains, so probably the most of anybody in the world. We've got people all over the world sending us spores, and it's very interesting. So how big is this problem? Chronic pain and mood disorders. It is massive. We all know that. One in five Canadians suffer from a chronic pain condition. 6.7 million plus uh, Canadians need help for their mental health uh, disorders. The economic impact is massive. You know, just for mental health, it's like 51 billion plus. And for uh, uh, chronic pain, I know it's about $60 billion uh, per year just for that. Uh, we have seen a crazy amount, uh, just, a, just a, an explosion of opioid-related deaths, which is so sad, between January of 2016 and May of 2021 in Canada, 20,000 plus, which is just a real, it's a tragedy. Um, for chronic pain, the average lost work days per year per employee is like, you know, 28 days a month. So clearly we can do better. And I think that's what we all hear. We really want to do better. And uh, clearly it's better to have more tools in our toolkit than fewer. So here's the opioid curve, illicit toxicity deaths uh, in the last few years. As we can see, the curve has been going up almost exponentially. We sort of got a handle on things here in 2018, 2019, and then it just shot up during the COVID pandemic because of you know, lack of access, worsening mental health. So now we're looking at almost 2,500 deaths in BC per year, just in our province, which is just terrible. So intro to psychedelics, a little bit more uh, fun topic, the things you guys are interested in, I'm sure. Um, so psychedelics are, or classic psychedelics are, um, uh, you know, substances like LSD, psilocybin, DMT, and they exert their perception altering effects through agonism at serotonin receptors, mainly. You know, there are many others, but mostly these 5-HT2A receptors. The primary effects of psychedelics are alterations to perception and consciousness. And these substances have a very good safety profile and low potential for abuse and dependence. We'll get to that. So you'll see the psilocybe cubensis on the right. That's sort of the one of the most well-known psilocybe or psilocybin-containing mushrooms. There's more than 200 uh, species in this genus. So huge amount of var variety that nature's bounty has just given us. All right. So I like this slide. Dr. David Nutt uh, at Imperial College London, um, they published this study a few years ago in The Lancet looking at drug harms to the individual and to society. And look up right up top, alcohol you know, wins by a mile. You know, it's so ubiquitous, and uh, you know, it's, there are so many medical and psychological harms, closely followed by heroin, crack cocaine, and so forth. I mean, these are terrible molecules. Um, and um, right at the bottom, mushrooms. <laughs> harm to self, harm to user. Very, very safe in that regard. We know that alcohol is sort of associated with neuropathic pain, you know, violent crime, like murders. There's a 40 to 50% sort of co-prevalence, so it's, it's, it's significant. It's associated with you know, frontal lobe damage. Alcohol is also associated with motor vehicle accidents. So yeah, and it's legal, it's socially embedded, it's taxed, everybody uses it. So this is illogical. So safety, if we look at large population-based studies, there was uh, one done uh, in uh, this journal. It was a large population-based study of 130,000 adults in the US. Uh, and psychedelics were not linked to mental health problems or suicidal behavior. So Nature Scientific reports, uh, this is a very recent study, 
looking at the association between classic psychedelics that we just uh, discuss discussed and opioid use disorder in a national US sample. The lifetime psilocybin use was associated with lowered odds of opioid use disorder. So odds ratio of 0 0.7. So that's a 30% reduction. So that sort of piqued my interest as well. Being an eMERGE doc, you know, if you've seen too much damage done in this regard. Okay, so another study that came out recently was the study, the MDA, MDMA-assisted therapy for severe PTSD, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled phase three study. This was done by Rick Doblin and Al, et al. I think we've all heard of this. And uh, they found that, you know, MDMA-assisted therapy was highly efficacious in individuals with severe PTSD, and the treatment was safe and well-tolerated. And for those nerds who look at the Cohen's D or the effect size, it's huge. I mean, <laughs> um, so uh, for, it's much higher than SSRIs. So there's some uh, potential there. So another one, psilocybin and addictions, positive open label studies in alcohol and nicotine use disorders by Bogenschutz and Johnson. It's an anti-addictive substance. Now we think we're new and we're all Fancy here with our research, but look at the first study that was done with LSD in chronic pain. It was 1964. And this was in patients with chronic, you know, unremitting cancer pain. And uh, uh, LSD was uh, outperformed meperidine, which is Demerol, and hydromorphone. So it was in 1964 out of the University of Chicago. So I'm very excited to tell you about our research that we're going to be launching. So our first study. Um, we are launching is going to be uh, called Psilocybin Assisted Psychotherapy for Opioid Tapering in Chronic Pain. It's a pilot feasibility study. The next study uh, is going to be a, a randomized controlled trial, and uh, we're going to be looking at the effect of oral macrodose or high dose psilocybin uh, in moderate to severe depression in patients with chronic pain. So we really, you know, Fortune to be teaming up with UBC Okanagan, and uh, I hope we're going to see a lot more research on this field because that's sorely needed. We're not the only team. There's literally dozens of teams all over North America and Europe, uh, UC San Diego, Yale University, the Beckley Foundation in the UK, um, University of Michigan, and many others. So just two quick studies in my pain field. This is a big journal, Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine, and a uh, paper by Castellanos et al., and they looked at chronic pain and psychedelics, a review and proposed mechanism of action. Another, the other study that's important here is uh, this one by Flanagan and Nichols on psychedelics is anti-inflammatory agents. So these are actually anti-inflammatory, not for, just for your brain, but also for other organs. And we, we know that there's inflammation at play with depression and chronic pain. So very interesting to look at that angle as well. So just distill from those two studies how, to, just brief putative mechanisms of action. How do these substances work? Uh, well, they induce neuroplasticity. You get this glutamate surge in your brain, and that increases your neuroplasticity. Uh, there's these neuroanti-inflammatory effects, these serotonergic effects, which improves cognition and mood. And they also a very interesting field here, or an interesting sort of uh, angle is this, this concept of the default mode network. And, of course, there's people much smarter than me that will be talking this evening on uh, some of these uh, topics. But just in short, this default mode network is sort of constructed as sort of a network of interacting brain regions that are active when a person is not focused on the outside world. That's when we're daydreaming and we've got self-reverential thoughts. Now, what psychedelics do is they shake the snow globe of your brain. So, you know... Uh, I like this analogy because it, um, you know, no longer is the, is the brain sort of uh, stuck in this rut, you know, of looking at the same problem in the same way every day. It breaks that cycle. So the brain can come up with alternative resting state sort of hypotheses and, and, and ways of looking at the world. Another way to show this is basically to look at these, the functional brain connectivity. Uh, and these are functional MRI scans. Uh, on the left is the placebo group. On the right is the psilocybin group. So these are healthy volunteers. The guys on the left got placebo. People on the right got psilocybin. 
I dose. It must have been an interesting study. And then got put in a scanner and told to lie still for a while, I guess. And, um, and if you look at these little nodes here on the outside, um, you know, there's these little dots on the outside. That represents the different functional brain regions. And then there's these lines between them. And that, uh, you know, points to the in to increased connections that you see between these different brain regions. So just in the chronic pain field, uh, a word on ketamine. It's all fine and dandy to talk about that. But in the chronic pain field, um, we've got ketamine. We've, I've used it in the ER and the OR for 25 years. I think lots of us docs have used it. We know it quite well. It's on the World Health Organization Essentials Drug List. Um, it's, you know, it's been out for 50 years. We know it's really good for acute pain. It's also good for um, chronic pain, which, as we'll see from this study. Uh, consensus guidelines for chronic pain. CRPS, there's a good indication for complex regional pain syndrome. There's moderate evidence. And then there's weaker evidence for phantom limb pain, spinal cord injuries, fibromyalgia, and mixed pain. So we're going to be hearing from multiple other colleagues that are much smarter than me about the ketamine program and how we're going to expand that further. So ketamine indications. It's in the mental health field. It's also very useful for the treatment of, uh, the treatment of uh, treatment resistant depression, PTSD, other mood disorders, OCD, and also substance use disorders like um, alcohol use disorder and opioid use disorder. So Dr. Zach Walsh on our team has just recently published a really good review in the British Journal of Psychiatry uh, on this, these topics. So yeah, a little bit of humor <laughs> to the dude that stole the antidepressants. <laughs> Hope you're happy now. <laughs> All right. So in summary, I don't want to bore you to death. I'm going to be just summarizing because uh, other good people are need to uh, speak. So there are multiple antinociceptive and positive mental health effects linked to psychedelic compounds and ketamine. What we see here is a catalyst effect. You know, this needs to be followed by psychotherapy. You can't just sort of give someone a molecule and hope for the best. We need to integrate this with psychological supports, do it in a safe environment, medical setup. We also need to ensure that patients can regain that connection to the self and connection to others. And these medications help with that. And pain care and mental health care should be interdisciplinary. We all need to work together on this. So I say, let's shake the snow globe. As Hippocrates said, cure sometimes, treat often, comfort always. And I thank you very much for your time. This is my wife and I, uh, after a day of mushroom foraging in Revelstoke. These are delicious chanterelle mushrooms. I do want to point out it's not the magic kind. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.